Hi YouTube, this is Patrick, and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 9, Blackwater. They've been building this one up for about a year, ever since Tyrion got knocked out last year, and we missed that battle last season, and all the fans complained and everything. Um, and uh, it lived up to my expectations and surpassed my expectations. I made a post on the uh, po uh, podcast of Ice and Fire Forum about... Um, uh, why this episode could be the best episode of the series. I did this before it aired, and um, basically saying that it would be because it would be just focused on one setting, and it would be kind of a standalone, which this show doesn't do. It just it can't do. You know, other great shows in the past um, always have like standalone ep episodes. You look at shows like Breaking Bad; they have episodes um, that don't that kind of separate from everything else going on and just focuses on like one spot or just one like subject for an hour um lost used to do it all the time because they would have you know character centric episodes and stuff like that uh but this show can't do that or its first chance you know to actually do that was this this episode and that's why i was really looking forward to it because that's why i thought it would make it the best episode of the series, and I think that's exactly why it is the best episode of the series so far. Um, and from what I understand, I'm look, it looks like I'm not alone in thinking that. So, um, so yeah, on to the review, which I will again split up between uh, non-book reader stuff and book reader stuff. So anyway, um, I like the opening, the Private Ryan puke bucket. Um, that was uh, it was just a nice little. I don't know. Star, I just figured I'd just throw that in there. Um, Shay talking to Tyrion, setting up, um, kind of reminding the audience that he was in the same place last season, episode 9. Uh, just a nice little callback. So a couple of things like this that they were doing at the beginning of the episode that kind of built up the tension. Um, I thought it worked really, really well. Um, it actually... it my complaints about last week not setting up the tension of Blackwater were kind of diminished, so it actually helped out last week's episode by putting the tension building in this week's episode. Um, which I originally thought if they were going to do that, it was going to backfire and it was going to be too much of of building before the actual fight. And I was getting a little worried when we got to like 9.15 and, you know, the fighting hadn't started started yet. But in, you know, retrospect, looking back on the episode now, it was, it was just perfectly... Um, uh, structured, pretty much. Uh, anyway, I got off track on that one. Uh, I, the other, the good stuff, Varys just being concerned, which he never is, so that was nice to see. Um, you know, because he knows that there's, like, some dark magic coming with Sanus, and it's just, it was just a different side. So everyone was really on edge, and it really set the mood pretty well. Um, Bronn with a bunch of soldiers was singing a song it's called The Reigns of Castamere and I bought the soundtrack for the uh, show on iTunes when it leaked earlier in the week um, and uh, the song was the song that plays over the end credits of the show that was sung by uh, a band called The National um, but I was wondering how they were going to get that song into the show I figured that would just be an end credits song and it was but uh, I wanted to see if there's any way they could get it in and right away there it was and just very naturally um which makes sense that it was natural because it was, the episode was written by the author of the books, uh, George R. R. Martin, who knows what he's doing. He's to write for television, and um, he hasn't lost. In fact, writing probably the episode last season better prepared him for this one. So, uh, and his wit was like all over these first twenty minutes as well, um, especially the stuff with uh, with uh, Sansa. Just Joffrey comes in, just thinks he's going to throw a couple more insults at her and just whatever, and she just completely gives him shit, and he can't do anything about it, and she knows he can't because he's, he's got to go and you know to the battlefield. And she gives Tyrion shit, um, which it was nice to see, and it looks like she was doing it because she finally has like a, a slight upper hand with everything, that she thinks that maybe, at this point she's saying, maybe, hey, hey, if Stannis gets here, I'm free. You know, all you fuckers are gone. So I can finally, you know, say something, even just just slightly, um, which was wonderful to see after a season of her getting just beat and nearly raped and everything, just to see her get a little bit, you know, a couple more jabs in. Couldn't do it with Cersei, uh, which I'll get to later, but still, very nice to see. Um, 
the only the one the other setup the bronze scene with uh, the hound that was a nice little setup that paid off later to do the traditional one person save someone um, in a battle scene and that you can just like give like a nod or something like that you know um, so I like that they, they set it up with those two people he's like why would that scene be in there at first I was thinking but I thought it set it delivered well um, and punctuated a good moment later on in the episode uh let's see right the battle started the second the the whole wildfire thing the way it was built up um you know the tent you could just feel it coming coming and i it, they were building it up so much and then the payoff was just fantastic it was i was sitting there saying holy shit like three or four times in a row because it just kept going and um it was, uh, it made the scene with Mathos and Davos at the beginning of the episode, you know, kind of sad to watch. Again, I, I kind of knew that was coming, and Melisandre said, you know, death by fire, um, at the beginning of the season for him. Um, but yeah. But, uh, anyway, um, yeah, the, when the wildfire hit, I was, like, satisfied already with whatever, like, whatever the battle was gonna be the rest of the episode, or whatever TV it would seem, um, you know, however, you know, pushed, like, down, however, you know, minimalist it would be, I was already sold when that explosion hit. I was like, I don't care. That was good enough. So, um, and I, you could see that's where the budget, that's why we didn't see as many dragons as we, as we have this season. That explosion. Uh, completely worth it. Um, also amazing was Stannis in this episode, who just didn't give a shit and was going to lead the attack, be the first guy to hit the ground, the first guy to climb the ladder. Um, made me root for him, uh, even though I knew he was going to lose. Um, and I loved, you know, he's just kind of like, uh, as a gift going along online now of when someone tells you, you know, hundreds would die and he just kind of shrugs and he's, yeah, thousands will. Um, it was, yeah, it was great. It was a great contrast to see that to him, to like Joffrey and like, well, Stannis would be a better king than Joffrey, that's for sure. Um, just for this sake, um... And yeah, just everything about Stan. I love everything about Stannis on the show. I love him in the books. I love him. I love everything about him on the show completely. Um, the gore in this episode was I was knew we were gonna get some gory stuff because Neil Marshall, the director, directed one of my favorite horror movies called The Descent. Um, I was looking forward to seeing some some nasty kills, and we got somebody cut in half. We got Stannis cutting the guy's head off. Uh, the rock, like, just, you know, crushing the guy, just all that stuff was just ridiculous. Tyrion, like, sweeping the guy's leg, cutting it off, but whatever. Um, it was, yeah, it was just, all that was great. I, I knew we were going to get some moments like that, and I knew they were going to be great. Uh, if anything, I knew we were going to we get good, like, gory moments in the episode. Um, and I'm, they didn't disappoint either, not for me. Um... The thing that really made the episode was the pacing of being able to go with the battle and then back to Sansa and Cersei, which just, it was just like, you know, you get a breather every few seconds, except those scenes were full, because those scenes were actually really, really funny. Um, drunk Cersei is hilarious, and she's just being um, awful to Sansa. And uh, Sansa just can't do it. I love how she, she's just kind of bo bored with Sansa's whole, you know, yes, I love the king. Um, and she's just trying to just, like, oh, enough with that. Just, you know, you know, at least, like, she actually wants Sansa to, like, stop playing the game for a second and just talk to her, it looks like. Um, but, uh, yeah, her, like, just making Sansa drink and just, yeah. Uh, talking about a bit of a rape you know, it's just these awful things that she says that everyone that I I was laughing out loud because it was so terrible. Um, but yeah, great stuff. The two of them, it, it was it was just so much fun to watch that. Um, and then a very good contrast in the episode where Cersei leaves from what her duty should be, and Joffrey leaves from what his duties should be, and then that Sansa and Tyrion have to step up. Um, Sansa with the handmaidens where she calms them down, and. Uh, Tyrion obviously outside with the the battle and uh, yeah so it was just a nice little contrast it happened around the same time in the episode too I think so it was good to see uh, the hound this was the hounds best episode 
of the series where Rory McCann finally has been given something really substantial to do and he just took it and ran. Uh, by the way, did you know he's the guy that says Yarp from Hot Fuzz? Did anyone know that? I just found that out. It's mind blown. Um, yeah, the Hound, he just got to, he got to cut people in half one second later. He was looking at someone on fire and he was terrified. And then one second later, he was saying, fuck the king, which everyone, you know, I'm sure was cheering to hear. Um, yeah. It's just great. Great. Um, Tyrion's speech was amazing because it was exactly, it was just exactly what Tyrion is, which is practical, funny, and just, and human. He, um, you know, saying we're going to come around and fuck them in their ass funny just the fact that he was talking about how Stannis is going to take, like, don't fight for Joffrey or anything like that. Fight because what will happen if you lose? Um, and it was just, yeah, it was just great. Great stuff. And, um, his little fight in the battlefield, his turn around and saying, like, oh, fuck me was just, I mean, the amount of humor that the show is able to put in, that it's always able to put in during certain moments, um, is I, I think is one of its just one of its strengths, and it was everywhere in this episode. Uh, yeah, I mean the rest of the battle was more you know scaled down, but not to the point to look at it and say, for a television show. I mean, for not to the point to look at it and say that it was like cheap. I mean, for a TV show, it was it was outstanding. Uh, you couldn't ask for more. I don't think really couldn't have. So uh, yeah. Um, the Hound Sansa scene I thought was just really well lit and really really well shot. They've built that up a little bit this season, um, and you kind of really do want her to go. And she just puts her in such an awful, awful like rock in a hard place. Um, I mean, she at the moment she. Th I also the nice touch is she grabs Ned's doll that or the doll that Ned gave her from last season. I thought that was a very nice touch. I was waiting. To see, I actually thought they were going to do a moment with that at some point this year. Um, I should be thinking of her father or something and it would happen, but it didn't. Uh, so it was nice to see it there. Um, yeah, so anyway, the Hound Sansa scene. Very nice. Well done. Um, the thing with Tywin ending the episode, I think it makes uh, the whole stuff with Arya this season, it was kind of worth it because it the whole stuff with Arya made Tywin more likable at least for anyone watching the show, so to see him march in and save the day at the end of the episode, you kind of got the feeling like, yes, all right, Tywin. And normally you wouldn't be thinking that. Not last season you wouldn't have been thinking that about him. Um, also a nice touch that Loras was wearing uh, Renly's armor, if anyone noted. Which, yes, that means that Loras and the Tyrells have joined um, the Lannisters, which bodes well for those two, but not for Rob and not for the Greyjoys and uh, certainly not for Stannis. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the funny thing is that I think the strength of this episode is that there's so many characters that we care about, and, you know, didn't want any of them to go. Um, it is also, if you look at the season, maybe, I mean, it is probably the show's greatest weakness that we have so many characters, um, and I think if you look at the structure of the season with the writers knowing that episode 9 was going to just focus on this, it kind of means that they had to kind of crush a little bit of everyone else to get finished by episode 8 with their storylines, just with the finale. Um, but um, I wonder if they're going to do to try to do more standalone episodes like this, if they can. I'm trying to think if they could. I don't know if they can. I mean, they're, already, they're already almost done writing season 3, uh, it looks like, so... I guess we'll find out. Anyway, alright, so this was the best episode of the series. Um, we'll see if next week can top it. Uh, you know the episode is good when the worst thing about it is the preview for the following week, which is usually never. Uh, I always, you always love the previews. Um, but yeah, this one lived up to the hype, so... Uh, yeah, alright, I'm going to switch over to the spoiler section now. So if you haven't read the books, stop watching. Stop. Uh... Okay. All right. The I knew this was going to be a standalone episode just because in the books you're reading and all in the chapters you know they skip around place to place, but all of a sudden the structure completely changes. 
uh, in the books where all of a sudden we get a Sansa chapter, Tyrion, Davos, Tyrion, Dav you know, whatever. Um, and it felt like that this episode, too. So, um, yeah, that, that whole, the way they did that, that didn't really uh, surprise me. Uh, we got a little bit of Ari's story. We're going to get it, I guess, next season about how he got cut. Um, I always thought that was, uh, it's a very sad story. I'm glad we didn't need it in this episode, though. We didn't need to hear this episode. It really wouldn't have pertained to anything this episode, but I'm glad it was mentioned. Um, it said they used it to, like, tip off, like, the idea of magic and why he was afraid and everything like that, so that was cool. Uh, the Reigns of Castamere, I love that they put it in the show this season to make it not out of, like, left field next season, um, when it, I assume it's going to be next season with uh, the Red Wedding. So, um... Good call on putting it in there. Um, the sword that Joffrey gave the Sansa for a second, I thought it was going to be like the melted down and changed to ice that they haven't really mentioned, but I guess not. Um, okay, all you people complaining about the chain. Who cares? It would have, you know, basically, I'm sure they had a choice. Either the chain that puts all the ships together or the big wildfire explosion. Um... I know it's supposed to be like a mark of like Tyrion's like brilliance and his like battle strategy, um, but you know he d he did exactly what he did in the in the book. He held them off until his father showed up. Except there was just no chain this time, so it's just you know a little bit of a condensed version of it. it doesn't really bother me. Um, uh, yay on wildfire being green! I didn't think they would do that, and they did. Very happy. Uh, very pretty looking explosion. Uh, the one that got the short straw in the episode was Davos, who, like I said in the book, he has the chapter... I think he only has one uh, at Blackwater, which ends with him seeing his, like, sun's burning, ship's going down, and then he looks like he's dead. The show, I thought that was the one thing they I would have liked to have seen, like, his cliffhanger be a little more dramatic and a little more, like, emotional with the death of his son. Um, that would be the one thing that I would say... I disliked, I guess, about the episode, as far as the as far as an adaptation uh, goes, pretty much. Um, improvement is like Stannis fighting, which I think in the book he just like sits back and watches. The fact that he joins a fight, I think, just makes his character that much stronger um, for the show, and I think gains him some sympathy from everybody that was watching it. So, um, and it's hard to get Stannis sympathy, but these guys have been able to do it. So, uh, yes, nice change on that one. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Cersei being so mean to Sansa, but also being so funny, is pretty much how she is. I mean, she can be very cruel, but all this cruelty comes from, you know, some very damaging things that have happened to her. Um, and what she's telling her about, you know being sold off and all this stuff and, you know, not being born a man and everything like that, so... Again, it's a great contrast. That's, you know... Uh, I think the writers of the show and George, you know, did, did, did a great job with it. Um, I was happy to hear the, the woman's weapon line. Um, I was not happy to hear not as much singing. Sansa started singing a little bit, and then she kind of, Shay kind of cut her off, pretty much. Um, I mean, the point was still there. The point was still made. I just would have been... I thought we were going to get a, um, a Lord of the Rings moment where she was singing, and then we would just cut to the battle, but what can you do? Um, I will say I like Shay on the show. Do not like her in the books. Didn't like her in the books. I like her on the show a lot, and the actress has completely like won me over from last year, where I wasn't like the biggest fan of her. I didn't hate her, but I wasn't the biggest fan. Completely won me over. Um, the Hound... I wanted the Hound to like really shine this episode, and he completely did. Um, I was so happy to get the fuck your water, bring me wine, because uh, that made me laugh out loud when I read it the first time. Uh, he didn't say it as annoyed as I read it in the books, but the fact that I got the line just makes me happy. Um, as far as the Sans Hand stuff goes, I mentioned this kind of in my last review, that they... I don't understand all the Sansa and stuff in the sense, like, once what happens in this episode happens in the books, like, that's it. He mentions her once in the third book, and then he's supposedly dead. Sansa, I don't really think, thinks about him that much. Maybe she thinks about him once or twice, I don't know. So, if it doesn't amount to anything, at least as far as the books go, 
then I don't think that stuff really is that important. It's more like a fan service kind of thing, at least I think. That's just my opinion, I guess. Um, and I actually thought the show's version of the scene, of the, you know, the big scene, which I did, that I did want to see, because it is a big scene in the book. I thought the show's version was better, because I really didn't want to see him make him, have him make her, like, sing and put a knife to her throat. That didn't seem like the guy we saw this episode. Um... I like that he just, you know, straight up asked her to come with him. And he started making some threats, but she, you know, like in the book, sees that, you know, there is, like, kindness in him and, you know, there is good in him and everything. So, um, and Sophie Turner was great in the scene where she's just, she's not, she's afraid of him, but just not completely, um, unlike everything else. Um, so yeah, I thought the scene was, it was just much, um, it was just much kinder than it was in the book, and I liked it for that. Um, I could almost understand the pairing a little bit more if it had been like that in the book, instead of looking like he was going to rape her. Yeah, romance. Um, Tyrion, instead of getting his nose cut off, he got a scar. Fine. Uh, I'm sure they don't want to do a CGI nose for the rest of the series, so no problem with that. Um... The whole thing with Renly's armor, thats I know it's a big deal in the book, but if you remember, we only hear of it, I think... Do we hear of it from when Tyrion's passing out? Or... It's later on. We just hear it, overhear it. Um, it's really, I think, just like an Easter egg for book readers. I, I doubt people that watch the... Um, uh, that just watch the show are going to like maybe notice. It was a quick, quicker you miss mode, you know, notice moment. Um... Let's see, what else? Um, again, like I said, the whole thing with Tywin, the fact that he was humanized from early in the season, I think makes that moment that much stronger. On top of the fact that Cersei was about to poison Tomlin, which... Um, I don't think... I, she didn't do that in the book, unless she mentions it later on that she was thinking of a way to do it. I don't remember if she does. Um, but that whole ending was really, really, really like powerful, and just... Um, people, I heard people complaining the episode ended too abruptly. Um, I was kind of worried on how they were going to... I didn't know how the hell they were going to end the episode. I really didn't. And I guess it did kind of end abrupt, but um, I just thought the idea... He just walks in, you know, blood-filled and everything, you know, blood all over his face, just walks in and just says, We won. That's it. Over. I mean, it's good enough for me. Um... Yeah, this episode surpassed my expectations completely. And, um... Hats off to George. Um... You know, my favorite episode, I think, of the series is probably the season one finale, or the third episode from season... from this season. Um... But... I think for anyone... Like I said, every show needs an episode for people to point to and say that's a great episode. A lot of people talk about it as if it's like Baylor from the first season, but I really think that episode is very good with a great, great ending. Um, I think a lot of the show, the best things about the show, instead of it being episodes, are really more moments in episodes. Um, instead of the overall thing. That wasn't the case with this one. This one, I loved the overall thing instead of parts of it. Um, which is how I feel about most of the, most of the episodes. Uh, but not this one. Um, alright, so now next week, um, oh, by the way, everyone, people are all saying, like, oh, George should write every episode, and, um, listen, it's a lot easier, I think, to write one episode, uh, like he did, or like Brian Cogman did, and both of their episodes this season were my two favorites, um, than it is to have to worry about doing the entire season. Um, so I think people saying that, you know, David and Dan should just let the other guys do it and just kind of, you know, that kind of stuff makes me roll my eyes. Um, it's, uh, also, I don't want George to write every episode because I want George to write The Winds of Winter, please. That'd be nice. Um, uh, I, I could definitely, I mean, look, George is a is a great writer and the strength of the episode was on, you know, George's writing. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's more difficult when you're writing multiple episodes. 
Uh, so I, I think people really, really should like leave David and Dan. Like you know, shouldn't be on them as much, um, unless they fuck up the house at the end, dying next week. Um, then I'll be on them, and call myself a hypocrite, I guess. Um, but it looks like they might not because that uh, the soundtrack for for that scene is like five minutes long, and then there's another track that's like another three minutes that should all encompass everything at the house and then dying so looking forward to that for next week um looking forward to john and half man jamie and brienne Arya getting her coin um uh, and whatever else they're gonna do oh winter, whatever happens at winterfell and everything like that yeah um all right that's it for this review uh blackwater best episode of the series hands down Adiós.